How would you feel if you heard the news that very soon you will have a COVID-19 PCR test you could do at home without a doctor's prescription and get accurate results within 20 to 30 minutes? That'll be fantastic, right? Hello everyone, I'm Naveen Agarwal and I want to welcome all of you to my weekly video update. One year after COVID-19 crisis began, there is still talk of testing. Sure, we are talking more about vaccines now, but testing continues to be a big pain point for all of us. If you have to get tested, you need to probably go to a testing site or your doctor's office. They might do a rapid test. Within 15-20 minutes you have results, but they might ask you to also do a PCR test because accuracy of these rapid tests is very questionable. And then you wait two or three days to get your results. So it's not convenient. It can be a very frustrating experience, especially when you want this information quickly to make decisions. So that's why I was very excited about the news uh, that FDA has just authorized for emergency use. The first ever COVID PCR test, non-prescription, you don't require a doctor's prescription that can be done at home or over the counter. And it gives you results within 20 to 30 minutes. So we will talk about that test in this particular video. I'll give you some basic facts, describe the operation, how it works, and then give you some data that they have presented, performance data that they have presented in their data package. It's just a starting point, probably the best case scenario. Remains to be seen what the real world performance would be, but it's a very good starting point. So we will talk about that. And then we'll also talk about what those results might mean for you individually. Let's say you get a positive result or a negative result, or let's say something like an invalid result. What does that mean? We'll talk about that. So let's look into it. So far, 336 tests have been authorized by the FDA. 250 are RT-PCR tests. These are the molecular diagnostic tests, tend to be more accurate, but they are done in a laboratory somewhere. It takes long, not very convenient. 38 of them, yeah, you can collect samples at home, but they still have to be shipped to a lab. 71 are antibody tests, and these are done later on after you have potentially recovered to detect the presence of an antibodies in your system in response to the infection. 15 of them are rapid antigen tests. So there's a growing number of at home and OTC tests now because this pain point continues to remain and there is a lot of innovation going on. Uh, there are several RT-PCR tests now. Uh, this one we're going to talk about in this video comes from Q Health. It's an at home OTC test, doesn't require a prescription. Lucera Health has an at home and point of care test, but it requires a prescription. And I have a video on that particular test you can find on my YouTube channel. There are several antigen tests. Elume at home and doesn't require prescription. You will begin to see this hit the store shelf fairly soon because they are ramping up production uh, and they have received a pretty big grant from the federal government to actually build a plant in the US. So you will begin to see that being available very, very quickly. Quidel also now has uh, the at home indication for their test, but it requires a prescription. And Abbott's Binex now also received the at home indication for their test. It requires prescription. So you have some options that still require prescriptions, but now more options are becoming available that you can just pick up from the store shelf without needing a prescription from the doctor. And that's that's great news. I expect to see more of this come out in the future because this demand from common people is still pretty strong. So this is an at-home non-prescription PCR test. It's called Q COVID-19 test for home and OTC. Technique is RT-PCR. Samples are self-collected nasal swabs. Target is the viral RNA, specifically the N gene, nucleocapsid gene in the viral RNA. Instrument is a Q reader. You have to get that reader separately. And every time you do a test, you will use a single use disposable cartridge and a swab. That's it. Time to result is about 20, 25 minutes, including preparation time. Availability, they are projecting 100,000 tests by summer of 2021. So it's going to be here soon and further 
production capacity increase are likely to happen fairly soon because I still believe the demand is going to be very high. Very simple steps and easy process. It's based on the information they have provided in their uh, instructions for use. You have to get ready, get the reader, collect all the materials, make sure you have their app. You have uh, to uh, connect the, pair the app by Bluetooth with the reader. Make sure you have done that. You open the pouch that contains the cartridge. Now, cartridge has to be protected from humidity and temperature and other, uh, other environmental conditions. So it comes in a pouch. So you open that up right before you are about to do the test. You, you cannot wait too long after opening the cartridge pouch. You insert the cartridge in the reader. You collect the sample and directly insert the swab into the cartridge. That's it. You don't have to, you know, mix it in a dilution tube, shake it up and then, you know, squeeze a few drops. You don't have to do any of that. So that's much simpler. Then you wait 20 minutes because there is isothermal reaction going on inside. And you get a positive result, negative results or invalid or cancelled result. And we'll talk a little bit more about what it means. That's it. Simple, easy steps and very easy process. Uh, let's look at some of their performance data. Analytical sensitivity, limit of detection. That means how low the amount of virus it can detect. It's a very important performance criteria. Uh, so they are showing 20 copies of genomic RNA. Now, they did this experiment with... Uh, a genomic copy of the viral RNA, not the actual virus in itself. They are showing 20 per wand, and that comes to about 1.3 per microliter just for the sake of comparing with other tests. And they have verified this performance against a comparator test with real SARS-CoV-2 virus. And they are showing pretty good performance even at their limit of detection where with the actual virus, they are showing about 75% detection and the CDC RT-PCR is detecting right, right around 35%, so much lower. And if you go three times their estimated LOD, you get pretty much 100% detection by this particular test. So it's likely to work very well even at low viral concentrations in the real world. So this LOD actually is pretty good. Now, um, one thing I will say is that it's not very easy to compare the performance of on LOD between tests unless you do it in a standardized way. And now actually CDC has provided a standard panel uh, to laboratories to do this LOD determination. I've talked about that in some of my other videos. You can find out and hopefully we will get some data from on this CDC panel from this test uh, sometime soon. And that will be a good way of really understanding what this LOD is, but it looks pretty good based on these numbers. Uh, this is important because we are worried about different variants, correct? So they have done a simulation, not a real experiment, but a simulation to show the potential for reactivity against these new variants. And what they did was that they evaluated the performance of their primers, the forward reverse primers and the probe against these sequences of the, of the variants that are being reported. So this GI SAID is actually a public database where people are reporting literally thousands of genomic sequences of coronavirus. So they are comparing those sequences with the ability of these primers and probes to detect and, and work with those uh, sequences. So it's a simulation, it's not a real experiment. And they are showing close to 99% match. There is some mismatch, but 99% match is a very good indication that in the real world, these primers and probes should work against those variants. So B.1.1.7 actually is the UK variant. 1.351 is the South Africa variant. Again, close to 100% match. They also show data against the Brazilian variant P.1 and that also shows about 99% match. So we are beginning to see this data in the EUA packages, which is very encouraging. And it tells us how good this test could be against those variants. So this is uh, pretty promising news. Now, later on, let's say we find we have a variant against which these primers and probes don't work very well. They'll have to do more research and develop new primers and probes. 
but now the testing platform is uh, pretty good right because all they have to do is send you a new cartridge after uh, validating the performance of those primers and probes so they are building a platform that can be used in future over and over again even against new variants but as it is this particular test should work fairly well clinical evaluation uh, they are reporting pretty good diagnostic sensitivity and specificity. That's also called positive agreement and negative agreement. 97% uh, and 99%. But what I like to do is look at positive predictive value at 5% disease prevalence and negative predictive value. I have again talked about these concepts in my other videos. And those numbers are also looking pretty good. 85% PPV and 99.9% .9 NPV. So if you, if you test positive, there's an 85% chance that you are really positive. So it's a pretty high number. Other tests are showing anywhere from 40 to 60, 70%. So much better PPV. And if you test negative, very, very high chance that you are actually negative. More importantly, a subset of this data on asymptomatic individuals is showing nearly 100%. Uh, positive agreement and negative agreement. So it can work on asymptomatic individuals as well. Good data, good technology platform. It's, uh, it's a reader and a cartridge combination. Simple, easy steps should be available fairly soon. I don't know what the price point is going to be, but it's definitely not going to be as inexpensive as the rapid antigen test because it's offering you more value so but it depends upon how they price it and availability could be an issue more importantly for me is that they are showing data that it could work against these new variants as well very good news and in future if there is another variant that is completely new then they may just send you a new cartridge that will have the right reagents to work against uh, those variants Let's talk about what these tests might mean for you. Let's say you test a positive and you have no symptoms and you say, I don't believe this, right? Uh, positive result could be a false positive for, for, from one or more reasons, but it also could be a co-infection with something else that this particular test is not specific to. So you have to, you have to look at that from that perspective. Let's say you have symptoms and you got a negative result clearly a false negative very low chance but it could happen negative result uh, and again you may have to repeat it with another test but let's say you you have a negative result from some other reason could be maybe a variant issue right you you have a variant that this test is not specific to that could also be a possibility whether you get a positive or a negative and you know your history you need to discuss that with your doctor to really decide what your next step should be Okay? So that's very important. So interpretation of this, these results still requires some consultation with an expert. It is really not very easy to fully understand what those results mean. So yes, convenience is there, reliability is there, but interpretation requires probably some consultation with your doctor or a healthcare provider. So keep that in mind. How about invalid results or cancelled results? Invalid is maybe you didn't collect enough samples. Or maybe there was a system error. You may have to repeat the test, but you will need a second cartridge, obviously, right? Cancelled, maybe again, there was a mistake. Maybe the system canceled the results or by mistake, you pressed the cancel button on the app. So you may have to do the test again. So still there are a lot of variables and factors you have to pay attention to. This is not, this is not something you can do without reading the instructions, I know. I'm an engineer and I very rarely look at the user manual before I start assembling things and doing things and then I go back and forth. We cannot do that with these tests. We have to really pay close attention to the use instructions because otherwise it will be an invalid result, cancelled result, a false positive or a false negative and it may have nothing to do with the actual result that you're expecting. So make sure you read them carefully, follow them carefully and after you get the result to really understand that, make sure you discuss that with your healthcare provider and your doctor. So great news and I hope this is useful. Hopefully this test will be available soon and we can take advantage of it. Just go buy it from a pharmacy. Let me know if you have any questions, concerns, any other topics on your mind that you want to learn more about. 
leave a comment here or engage with me on LinkedIn. We always have good discussion and I look forward to it. Thank you for your interest and attention. And I hope all of you are staying safe in these very difficult circumstances. Thank you.